We're inside the African American Firefighter Museum, which is home of Old Fire Station Number 30, and we're here on the apparatus floor. The only original thing about this fire station, which was built in 1913, are the four exterior walls, the three fire poles, and the apparatus floor. On the wall, we have a picture that made the uh, Los Angeles Times in 2002. It tells the story of the first African American firefighter, which was Sam Haskins here in Los Angeles. Sam Haskins was born a slave in 1840, and he came to Los Angeles in the 1880s. In 1888, he joined the fire department. In 1892, he was uh, appointed to be a call man. And unfortunately, his life tragically ended in 1895 when he was killed responding to a fire. And so two years later, George Bright joined the fire department in 1897, and he is now known as our second black firefighter, and Sam Haskins is now known as our first African American firefighter here in Los Angeles. As we come up the stairs, we have a few pictures on the wall here, and a couple of uh, artifacts. One of them is one of my favorite, the badge. The badge is written by engineer Ron Price, who was an African American firefighter, and it's basically a testament to what firefighters have to go through, and it's a beautiful piece. So those that come to the museum, we hope they can take the time to read this and see what Ron has put down from his thoughts. This picture right here is of our old Stentorians, the original founders of, this, of the organization. They're pictured here with Fire Chief William Bamatri and also the members of the Fire Commission. This picture was taken about a year ago when the Fire Commission hosted one of their meetings here. Please visit our website at www.aaffmuseum.org or call us at 213-744-1730. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's really an um, honor and a pleasure for me to be here at the Firefighters Museum. I was telling some friends who are visiting with, my sisters who are visiting with me from out of state, Judge Ernestine Doris from Memphis, Tennessee, and Judge Patricia Banks from Chicago, Illinois, and Miss Alpha from San Francisco. I said, this is my hood. <laughs> this was my fire station when I was a child. The response in my community at 32nd Street off Central Avenue came through this fire station. So it is always wonderful, a great feeling for me to come back to this firefight, fire station and now that it's the African American Firefighters Museum. I have seen the time when there were no African American firefighters coming out of this fire station to the point where there were African American firefighters coming out of this fire station. I have lived in the Los Angeles area over 55 years so I've seen the growth and development of Los Angeles and the contributions that our firefighters are now making to our nation. And it's absolutely wonderful to have this museum here so that our children will know and understand the rich history of what you have contributed to America. To my good friend, the artist, Cynthia St. James. St. James. <laughs> Somehow, wherever she is, it's a must that I be. I enjoy her artwork so much, and if you don't have one of her pieces, you don't know what you're missing. It's an absolute great artist. Um, I commissioned her to do the piece for the Maybelline Ephraim Foundation for my cups and souvenirs and all the things that we sell. So I really think she's a great artist. She gives a lot to our community. She's always donating so much till we had to sit down with a meeting with her and say, see if you got to make some money, you can't donate all the time. <laughs> we have to charge something because we want our people to be recognized for the quality of their work. And we have to learn to support and support one another and to purchase work from each other just because you know them. It's great work and it deserves the price. So pay the price and support Sister St. James. To all of you, may this be a wonderful month of remembrance of where we've come from. Isn't it great to see that in the 21st century in America, we have a choice for president. We have a choice for president. With so many elections, it's been the lesser of the evils, and you just choose one of the evil ones. And, um, but this time, we have a real choice. I, we can't lose if you go with Hillary or if you go with Obama, but we have an absolute choice. It's not, you know, Jesse ran, it was like, you know, you understand that that was history making and it was, it was time for to make a statement. Shirley Chisholm ran because she had the strength, the courage, the capacity to run, and we knew that it wasn't yet time, but they, they told me, you better get ready. You better get ready, because we come. So Shirley said we're coming. Jesse said we're coming. Then Al turned around and said, uh, we still coming. We still coming. And now the rock says, I'm on your heel, and I'm about to knock you out. And that's the greatest feeling of all. So I'm excited about this election.
action. I'm excited to be here at this time in history. And I'm going to do a shameless plug. Um, you got me up here. You funny. <laughs> has purchased uh, the show Divorce Court my seven years. They purchased part of those seven years. As of February 14th, it will be airing on TV One. Valentine's Day, the Love Day. They're doing a 14-hour marathon of Divorce Court on Valentine's Day. Wow. What's that all about? You may not want to do that. I don't know. But then again, you may, because we got some interesting cases, so you can avoid some of the problems that happen on Valentine's Day that make you not have a Valentine. Anyway, uh, and then just keep your eyes open for me. I'm in negotiations for a new deal. And Father's Day, Maybelline Even Foundation, we honor fathers June 15th. Bye. You judge Maybelline, we really, really do, and it was not a shameless plug. What we do is we share good news, and that's good news. So, 